G'day everyone. This is going to be another 10 minute um, guitar pedal video where I'm going to assemble a buffer. This time within 10 minutes I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. Um, and it's really cheap to put together and um, it's not really that complicated either. Um, if you're not sure what a buffer is, um, basically if you have a lot of um, cables and a lot of guitar pedals and uh, true bypass guitar pedals, you can start to lose the top end of your signal and until you actually do it, until you actually do this test, it's, it's actually quite surprising how much of that top end you actually lose. I'm not even going to bother miking this up because I think that the effect is so obvious that you'll hear it without um, having a, a mic directly in front of the amplifier. So obviously I'm going back in time here, I've already made the effect um, and I'm recording the intro after I've made the effect um, and the effect is down here on the floor, I'll show you in a moment, um, but basically as far as the actual buffer effect goes, um, this is uh, this is without the buffer on, and this is with the buffer on. I mean that just makes a huge difference. I'd be I'd be very surprised if you couldn't hear that through the um, through the microphone, uh, even not um, mic uh, even not mic'd up. That's on. That's off. There's a huge amount of top end that um, that gets sucked away from all the cables and um, through bypass pedals. So the the actual effect is down here, and um, it's actually the um, it's actually the end result um, of the of assembling it. And you, as you can see, it's very simple. Um, I'll show you the schematic uh, on the screen now, um, so you can see how it actually goes together. And then I'll actually be actually be assembling it point to point and showing you how I've assembled it. If you're in the market for one of these, you probably notice that um, they, they can range from $50 to $100. And I've got to say, I mean, this is a very basic buffer, uh, but it does what it's supposed to do. You can also use it if you're designing a guitar pedal. You can put this schematic in front or behind your the effect that you're um, that you're designing. If you need a if you need a buffer, uh, like the Tube Screamer has a buffer at the start and the end of the um, at the end of the of the circuit. Um, uh, it's a you know it's a buffered overdrive. I also have a fuzz pedal that I've built in 10 minutes and a boost pedal that I've built in 10 minutes. Um, so make sure you check those uh, videos too. I'll leave links for those if you're um, interested in watching those as well. So you might want to pause the video here. Um, and uh, open it up in a new window so that you can um, that you can refer to it as you build it. Just note that um, all these wires are connected except for that one, which is actually um, uh, it's going over the top. Um, uh, you know, so the so the um, vertical line is going over the top of the horizontal line. That's actually not connected, as you can see that little bump there. But the others, um, like where the two resistors are and the one at the end of six, um, they are connected with those, um, those circles means that it's connected. So you don't really need much for this effect. Um, you need a, a um, 100 nanofarad um, film capacitor. All these values are on that schematic that I showed you, but I'll just go over them quickly. Uh, you need a 100 nanofarad film capacitor, which, um, uh, you know, like a little box capacitor like this. Um, and it'll have 104 on the top, which means 100, na 100 nanofarad. An electrolytic um, 10 microfarad capacitor, which looks like a can with the, um, with the negative stripe on it. Two 1 meg resistors and your op amp, which in my case I'm going to be using a... It's actually a UA741, which is the same thing as an LM741. You'll also need to be able to connect jacks to this effect. So you'll need two mono jacks. And you'll need to be able to connect power to it as well. So you, um, uh, I'm just going to, I'm doing this as simple as possible. So I'll just be using um, a battery snap to connect to the, um, to, to connect to the effect. So I'm going to assemble this in the easiest way possible. Um, it's just meant to be a fun little project. I'm not going to be worrying too much about presentation. And to do that, um, I'm actually just going to bend the legs of the IC um, straight off to the side. You can hear my son laughing in the background there. <laughs> I think he's, I think his mum's tickling him maybe. Um, yeah, so just um, flatten the uh, IC legs like that. And just one other thing um, uh, about these ICs, the pinout. Um, 
the <laughs> pin one, <laughs> sorry my son's laughing in the background, pin one is the one with the little dot on it, I'll just get it in the light so you can see it, um, that's pin one and you actually count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you go across at four to five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's how the pin out is for these ICs. So I'm going to use a very specialised material to um, to uh, assemble this. It's um, high, a highly specialised material called Blue Tack, and um, I actually find for this sort of stuff it's actually quite good. Just make sure you don't melt the Blue Tack and it sticks to the components, of course. So I'm going to solder the the two resistors and the and the input capacitor, the 100 nanofarad film, in one hit. It's going to be easier for you if you just get them all in one hit. Otherwise. Um, uh, if you do the two resistors and then try and connect the the capacitor to the joint that the two resistors are on, you're gonna you're gonna reflow the solder and it's just gonna come apart. So it's best to do all the connections in one shot. So try and be neat when you solder this because um, you don't want to connect those pins together on the IC. If you connect those pins together on the IC, it's not gonna work properly, obviously. So we're connecting these three to pin three on the um, IC there. So this top resistor here actually connects to um, plus nine volts and pin seven. So I'm actually going to cheat here and just run it straight across over the other side to pin seven. And then that's going to go um, and keep the lead on and use that for um, the plus nine volts. So that it looks like this. You can see I've just run it straight across to, to pin seven. And that, then that's going to be the um, nine volt um, where we connect the nine volts to. And then this bottom resistor is actually connected to pin 4, which is connected to ground. So I'm going to do a similar sort of thing, just connect it straight to the um, pin that it needs to go to. And then that will be the, uh, the ground connection. Just make sure that you use this side of the um, lead, not that side when you connect it to the pin. So now pin 2 is actually connected to pin 6, but um, we've got this resistor from pin 3 sort of going across this way. So we'd have to crisscross over that. That's going to make a connection. So I'm actually going to go across the bottom to connect those two together with the output capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor. Just make sure that when you when you do connect this up that you use the plus side which has got the longer lead on it and no stripe and not the negative which has the shorter lead. So I've made the connection underneath um, and now you've got the input ground plus 9 volts and output. So that's essentially the effect um, wired up. Don't worry too much if you don't um, solder too neatly. Just make sure that you don't make any accidental connections between any of the leads of the um, components or the leads of the IC. You could also easily wire this up in v on Vero. It's just a little bit hard, harder for me to explain how to make the connections on Vero. So I'm just doing it um, uh, point to point, I guess you'd call it. So you basically got two, two options at this stage. You can either wire it directly to a couple of jacks or you can house it inside a pedal with a switch. The easiest of those two is, is the jacks, and that's the one that I'll be explaining. Um, basically, you need two mono, you get your two mono jacks, the input and the output, and you connect those to the input and the output of the, um, of the circuit. And you connect it to the tip lug of the, um, of the in-out sockets. So, um, for instance, this one here is the tip, that one is the shield. You can see that's connected to the inside of the um, socket and that one's connected to the tip. You look at it side on, you can see where it's connected. And then the only other thing you've got to do is to connect a piece of wire between the two shields from here to here and then another piece of wire from either of those to ground on the circuit. And then the connections for the battery snap, the plus goes to 9 volts and the negative also goes to ground, any ground, it doesn't matter which ground, you can put it to the shields, shield lug on the jacks or you can put it to the, um, the ground on the circuit, uh, it makes no difference. I won't be doing any of those, I'll just be plugging it into my test, I've got a little, um, uh, a, a little circuit tester that I'll be plugging mine into. Um, but if you want more info on how to actually wire it up inside an effect with the switch, um, uh, I'll, leave a, I'll leave a link for that um, so that you can actually wire it true bypass and you can actually hear the difference that it makes when you switch it on and off. Because obviously a buffer is a pretty subtle effect and, um, and you might want to test whether 
whether it's having an, an effect or not because sometimes it might not make any difference it's usually only when you have a lot of uh, pedals and cables that it actually really start to hear a big difference so that's it for this video if you enjoy these 10 minute um, guitar pedal videos make sure you give me a thumbs up let me know um, and um, subscribe for more guitar pedal related videos and uh, all that jazz thanks for watching